Climate Watch, there is not one but two unusual weather events impacting the planet this week. The first is the migration of a major dust cloud from the Sahara across the Atlantic Ocean. That is expected to hit the United States by the end of the week. The second is a remarkable heat wave in the Arctic, with temperatures as high as 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit. For more, CBS News meteorologist and climate specialist Jeff Berardelli joins me now. Uh, Jeff, these sound uh, incredible. Uh, let's start with, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the the um, uh, this dust storm because this is something that is coming at a time when the United States and the rest of the world is dealing with this coronavirus pandemic. Texas is already dealing with an increase in coronavirus cases, and now it's likely to get hit by what some are calling the Godzilla Sahara dust cloud. What can people in Texas expect to see this weekend? Okay, Elaine, to give you some perspective here, I worked in Florida for about two decades or so. This is the largest dust cloud that I've ever seen moving across the Caribbean. Uh, some say it's the worst that we've seen in, in 50 years. So visibilities are incredibly reduced. The before and after pictures across the Caribbean are incredible. And we have an article on cbsnews.com that you can check out those before and after photos. So this is really reducing the air quality, in some cases less than a half a mile visibility. And this poses respiratory concerns, not only in the Caribbean, but as you mentioned, it's headed towards Texas. And of course, Texas has a very high incidence right now of COVID-19. And so this is coincident. It's happening at the same time. We have this big dust plume moving into Texas at the same time when their cases are going up. Obviously, when you have that much dust, it can compromise people's respiratory systems. And of course, COVID-19 goes for people's respiratory systems. So we're concerned about that. It will get there on Thursday. It'll be thick on Friday and Saturday and then begin to move out on Sunday. But as it moves out, it's going to be making kind of a right hook, moving through basically all of the southeast and most of the middle Atlantic states, even parts of the Tennessee and southern Ohio Valley are going to see effects of this. And by the way, most of these dust plumes tend to kind of dilute and disperse a little bit. This one does not look like it's going to do so very much. So conditions are real bad in the Caribbean, and they're not going to be much better once this reaches Atlanta, Birmingham, Nashville, uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and into Richmond, Virginia, and probably Washington, D.C. as well. Yeah, I was looking at some of those pictures uh, during uh, my preparation time. It is remarkable to see the difference just a few days as this cloud is, is moving over. Um, what about this is especially unusual, Jeff? Is this related to climate change? No, it likely is not related to climate change. Um, actually, there's one study that shows that dust may actually decrease in the future because climate change would probably weaken the tropical circulation, the tropical wind to some degree. And by weakening that, there's the possibility we could see a little bit less dust. And by the way, I should tell you that dust is good for the Atlantic Ocean in that it uh, stops hurricanes from forming or it weakens hurricanes if they're out there. We're not expecting any tropical activity over the next week or so. So in a way, dust can be very good. We don't want more hurricanes uh, in the Atlantic Ocean. It's expected to be a very active season. But there's no indication that this, what's happening right now, is going to continue later in the season. And so, uh, you know, in fact, we think that this is going to all kind of um, start to dissipate probably as we head into next week. But in terms of climate change, there's, there's likely not much of an impact right now, at least. Well, moving on to the heat wave hitting the Arctic. This is remarkable. It got up to 100.4 degrees earlier wow. this week, which is likely the hottest temperature ever recorded there. Tell us what's happening. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing a ton of these heat waves in different places. It's not always in Siberia, but it's often been in Siberia, in the Arctic over the past five years. You know, part of this is due to natural fluctuations in weather patterns, but it's getting really hard to say that climate change is not making a big impact. We know it's making an impact. It's seemingly making a, a big impact now. Climate change is, is like the steroids. It takes a, a normal weather pattern and, and it infuses it with steroids. I mean, it's 100, it was 100.4 degrees in the Arctic. Now, I should say that in history, there have been a couple of times where temperatures have gotten to around 100 degrees in and around the Arctic Circle, literally a couple of times since we've been keeping records. But this would be the highest temperature ever in the Arctic. It has been warm since December and January. In fact, uh, temperatures in western Siberia have averaged about 10 degrees above normal Fahrenheit 
for all of those months, if you average all of those five months or so, um, and in terms of its departure from normal, it is twice that of the highest departure from normal before, back in 2016. So, you know, this is astonishing. As a meteorologist who've been doing, who's been doing this a long time, it's incredible. And just today alone, uh, some temperatures in, in parts of Siberia, 40 degrees Fahrenheit above normal, and fires have ignited all across Siberia and a lot of smoke as well. Just about 12 days ago, there were a few fires, and now there's dozens and dozens and dozens in Siberia. Well, is this a one-time occurrence? Can we expect to see more of this more often in years to come? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, look, it may not be always in the same place. Right now, it's in central Siberia. Um, it may move to a different part of Siberia, you know, different season, maybe later in the summer, maybe next year or the year after. Uh, it may move to Canada and, and Alaska. Alaska's been getting a lot of heat waves. Um, so basically, the weather pattern the incident weather pattern at that time kind of determines where it's going to be, and then climate change comes in and really pumps it up. So it will move. It will not always be in the same place, but you can bet your bottom dollar that we're going to see a lot more of these and a lot more intense heat waves in the future. And by the way, it, burnt, it, it burns uh, peat moss. It melts permafrost. That releases more carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere, and that is a positive feedback loop, and it helps to make climate change even worse. So climate change causes it or helps to cause it, and it makes climate change worse, so on and so forth. Before we let you go, Jeff, really quickly, I meant to ask you about the dust that's coming to the southeast. People should be wearing masks, according to health officials, for COVID-19, but it can help with the dust as well, obviously uh, trying to block some of those particles. You know, it's the perfect time. You have a dust, you have a, uh, a mask handy. You'll be able to use it for COVID-19 and you'll be able to use it for the dust. And like I said before, this is not just going to head towards Louisiana and Texas. It's going to round the corner and it's going to make its way across most of the southeast and mid-Atlantic. By the way, most of it's bypassing Florida. Florida is going to get a little bit. And, and when it's thinner, by the way, when, the, when the, um, the dust is thinner, it actually produces great sunrises and great sunsets. So that's kind of one of the pros of this. But there are a lot more cons. With, uh, with big dust storms uh, moving onto land. Yeah, there's one of those pictures that I was mentioning earlier. Pretty remarkable stuff. All right, Jeff Beardelli for us. Jeff, always great to see you. Thank you so much. Always great to be here. Welcome.